not using the mediator's name in vain, though know, Hebrews says that we have one mediator between God and man, that's the man Christ Jesus. Well, most people look at that as I sin, Satan accuses me, and then when Satan accuses me, Jesus goes to God and says, that's already paid for. The mediator works both ways, though. A mediator also deals with God to show us how to approach that God, how to act like that God, how to be a true son of God. So we need to realize that when we go to our mediator, Jesus Christ, he is mediating both ways. He makes sure that uh, we realize that we are accepted and beloved. We do need to come to him for repentance. He gives us that repentance. But we also need to realize he brings the word of God to us that we may learn how to be better sons of the Most High God. We may learn how to be true, um, true joint heirs of Jesus Christ. And when we look at that, this is one reason we don't use the Lord's name in vain. Because that is the way we approach our God and the way our God approaches us. So with that, I want to look at uh, a couple of things in the Bible to understand why we don't use the Lord's name in vain. If you'd stand and turn your Bibles, you don't have, you're not going to be able to look ahead because I don't have them out there today. <laughs> so if you'd uh, stand and turn to, the Bible, uh, turn to John chapter 1. We're going to read the first five verses and realize who Jesus Christ is, what he is, and why it was so important that he come, and why it's so important that we learn more about it. So as we look at the book of John, starting at verse 1, and we realize what I'm reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with uh, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Dear Heavenly Father. Let us comprehend your light. Let us comprehend the beauty of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the love of the Father to send Jesus Christ to us, that he may reveal God to man, that he may show man how to approach God, that he may take man, that he may take man's penalty on that cross, that by his blood shed I can be redeemed. By his blood shed I can be adopted as a son of God. By his blood shed I can be a joint heir of Jesus Christ. The, uh, the holy, eternal, Lord of lords and King of kings. Lord, let us realize who this Jesus is, who this God is. Let us hold that name in reverence. Let us ensure that that name is a name above all names, that we never use it commonly, and we realize exactly who this God is, who Jesus Christ is, and how we may approach him. We ask all of us, your precious sons, dear name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and take your seats. Now we see uh, several things there. He is the Word. When we read the Word, we are reading the living words of Jesus Christ. Yes, it was uh, men actually took pen and ink to uh, paper. Men are the ones that wrote down the words, but they were given to them by the Holy Spirit, by Jesus Christ, who's called the Word. So if we want to learn how to be proper joiners of Jesus Christ, we need to go to the Word He gave us. The instruction manual, how to be uh, joiners of Jesus Christ, is right here. Because he wrote them. And when he wrote them, we can learn exactly of him. Uh, he was in the beginning. He is God. We approach God. If we see Jesus, uh, we know that uh, we approach God. Remember, Tim, uh, uh, Thomas was told, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So that being the case, we have to understand who this man is, why we need to follow him, and how we need to follow him. Again, I praise God. He's my mediator. I praise God. That when I sin, uh, Satan will accuse me to the Holy Father. And when Satan accuses me, God will look at me and Jesus Christ as my mediator. Will point at his nail-scarred hands. Will point at the side that is injured. Will point as nail marks in his feet. And say, that's already paid for. It's forgiven. It's erased. He is pardoned. Praise God for it. But I need to understand the other way too. I need to stop using him as a mediator, and I need to learn how to please my Heavenly Father. I need to learn how to become the proper joiner of Jesus Christ. And by that, he is the Word. He takes the Word of the Father, writes them down for me uh, through the, through the uh, people he had write, as led by the Holy Spirit, and gives me how to follow him. It's, respons it's my response to do it. I have to do it. If I want to be a proper child of God, 
a proper joint heir, a proper ambassador, I need to understand how to do it. How do I do it? Again, by the word. With that, I want to look at uh, some of the verses we're talking about. Be holy, bride, holy. Where does that come from? How to be holy. What is holy? We've been talking about what holy is. We're going through the Ten Commandments to show us. Holiness is the attitude. Asking our mediator to show us how to follow him. To show us how to follow God. And we do that by coming to his word. And then he speaks to us through his word. And by speaking to, to us through his word, he shows us how to live for him. And when I turn to uh, 1 Peter, uh, we're going to read uh, from verse 7 all the way to the end. Because it shows us exactly who this guy is, why this guy is who he is, and what we need to do to follow him. So in 1 Peter, chapter 1, starting in verse 7, we read the following. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I just saw a, an example of that with a the choir. They sang with joy unspeakable and full of glory. They sang to the God that uh, has saved them. They sang uh, with joyful noise. I sing with horrible joyful noise. They sang with uh, melodious joyful noise. But they sang with that joy showing exactly who we're talking about. That's an example of the uh, joy and speak more full of glory. Continuing, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ was, uh, which was in them did signify, when he testified before him the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost <laughs> sent down to heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hoped uh, to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who, without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work. Pass the time of sojourn here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls uh, in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We see the very importance of the word of God. Without the word of God, we don't know how to live. We have this flesh. The flesh that desires to honor Satan. The flesh that desires to honor our fallen nature. The flesh that wants anything but to be holy. We don't want to be under, uh, under our God because we want to be our own God. Until we realize who that God is. Until we realize that God is love. Until we realize that the only joy and speaking of full glory we can have is by following our Heavenly Father. 
by being adopted as sons and daughters of the Most High God, by being made joint heirs of Jesus Christ, then we see the truth of the gospel. But without his word, we cannot do that. Without his word, we fall back to our old patterns. Without our, his word, we go what seems right unto man. The Proverbs said, that way leads unto death. You know what seems right to us. I fall into that trap often. If I get away from Bible reading, I start relying on my skills, my patterns, my ideas. And I'll tell you, they're not that great. Uh, I've been told that a few times in this church, but that's besides the point. We need to realize he is the one that gave us everything. He is the one that shows us how to live for him. He is the one to show us how to be holy as he is holy. And when he is holy, our God smiles on us. And when our God smiles on us, we feel that joy. When we feel that joy, we can do that much more. It is an upward spiral. You know, no one can stand still. People say, I'm saved, great. I got my fire insurance. I just want to stay here and wait until it returns. It doesn't work that way. We either grow or we shrink. And there is no other way. How do we grow? We work for God. We accomplish what he wants us to do. We do our callings. We study his word. We see the beauty of Christ. We see the beauty of God. And we keep doing it. And as we do it, God smiles on us. He gives us more to do. We accomplish that, and we produce fruit for him. As we produce fruit for him, he gives us more responsibility. And we keep growing that way. If you stand still, you're not reading the word. You're not getting fed. How many of you want to, want to fast for the next month? Not many. You look smarter than that. <laughs> so we don't fast from food for a month. We can't fast on the spiritual food either. Because as we, grow with, uh, as we grow in our bodies, we need to grow in our spirits. Now, unfortunately, when I grow now, it's this way. It's a different story, but that's, uh, that's beside the point. As children of uh, the earth, we need physical food to grow and prosper. As children of God, we need that spiritual food. The Bible, the bread of life, drinking uh, the living water. That we may grow thereby. That we may be strong thereby. And if we don't do it, we get weak. Just as if we fast for the next month, we'll get weak. We need to stay strong by staying his word. Otherwise, we start going to our own habits, start going to our own ideas. And we start displeasing God. And all of a sudden, we're removed from the callings he gave us. We don't understand why things have fallen apart so badly. We don't understand why everything I pray for, my prayer seems to hit the ceiling. Because I've forgotten who my Heavenly Father is. I come to him in vain. I use his name in vain because I want to, instead of serve him, I want to serve my own lusts. James says this often, why my prayers aren't answered. So we need to avoid that. We need to make sure that we hold his name in holiness. We hold his name up. We need to be holy as he is holy. Because if we aren't, we aren't living in the right family. We're not living according to the family rules. Now, how many of you were children? <laughs> Looks like all of you were at one time. <laughs> when you were children, you liked pleasing your parents. Because when you pleased your parents, things went well. When you didn't please your parents, then you try to avoid your parents. We have a Heavenly Father. When things are going well, we feel His joy. When things aren't going well, we feel His chastisement. All of us felt chastisement as children. Because <laughs> all of us were born sinners. And God needed the, the, our parents to correct us that we may become uh, mature adults. So we were chastised. We were chastised for our own good. We were chastised to bring us back into proper living. We are chastised to show the error of our ways that we may then uh, please our parents. God does the same thing to us. He chastises us. He does it uh, because we've, uh, re we've removed ourselves from his word. We've done things wrong. We've displeased him. So all of a sudden, things don't work right. He does that to make us come to him in spirit and truth. Lord, I don't understand what is happening. Why are my prayers going to be sailing? And after a while, we come to our senses. We start praying more. We start looking at his word. We realize how far we've fallen short, and we use that chastisement to make us so we understand him. We come back to him, and we learn once again how to be holy as he is holy. I have a holy father. I need to be a holy son. I don't want to fail, just as I did as a child. Uh, I have a spiritual child. But the thing is, when I fail, do I take that chastisement? Do I thank him for it? And do I return from him? Hebrews chapter 12 talks about that. Uh, be joyful in your chastisements because it means your heavenly Father is with you. 
It means your Heavenly Father is uh, pleased with you and wants you to grow into a proper spiritual adult that he can use in your calling. But how do we know these things? What do we do? How do we know that we can trust his word? Well, one thing, it's still here. Satan has try been trying to destroy his word ever since he was written. He's been trying to make sure that people don't read it. He's been trying to add to it, subtract to it. And there are a lot of churches that are using Bibles that have added and subtracted. And our churches are getting weak because of it. But we need to realize that his words are pure words. Purified seven times. Made for us that we can understand how to live for him. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 16 and 17, verses you've heard in this church many times, but it doesn't hurt to go over them once again. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, being holy as he is holy. So look at this. It's so given by inspiration of God. Jesus Christ is the word. He brought that word from God and gave it to us. These are the pure words of God, showing us how to please our Heavenly Father, <laughs> that we may live with Him forevermore, uh, serving Him, and enjoy being adopted by Him. So it's profitable for doctrine. What's doctrine? Well, doctrine is His rules, His family rules. You know, once again, we live in the United States. We have certain laws in this country. We have families. Our families have certain ways they operate. <clears throat> Well, we have another family. God's our father. He is a family with ways to operate. That's his doctrine. We learn the family, uh, family rules, and we learn how to please our heavenly father. For reproof. Well, I quite often fail. When I fail, I'm reproved. Why? Well, why do you spank kids? Something? My kid is running across the street. I grab him, I swat him, and I set him back. He understands. There's an action, and there's a reaction. And when I cross the street, I'm doing something I shouldn't do. I don't know why. I'm a kid. I have no idea why. I saw my ball. I wanted to chase it. But when I do that, I can't sit down so well. So I understand not to do that. After a while, I understand uh, the purpose of not doing that because some car may run me over. Remember, I mentioned that to Kelly one time. Before she was able to understand the full things, I said, Kelly, you can't run across the street. If you do that, a car will run you over and there'll be no more Kelly. She looked at me and says, well, then you have to make another Kelly. <laughs> so we don't want to make another Kelly we don't want to make another George we don't want to make another anything we want to ensure that we can understand why those rules are in place they're in place for our good and we study them to understand that and when we're approved we realize we've fallen short and God approves us for our own good uh, for correction same idea I've been reproved I've been spanked uh, I don't cross the street anymore I have no idea why Correction, you see that car that just went by at 95 miles an hour? If you were under it, you'd be a grease spot. That's pretty much correction, understanding why we follow the rules we follow. For instruction in righteousness. No? Um, and righteousness is how to live in a society. No? If we're a righteous society, we do things to put other people in uh, first that all of us may be unified. Well, instruction in righteousness in God's uh, family is to put others first is to ensure we follow his way, follow his word, do everything he wants us to do, because that is joy. You know? uh, in church, we smile a lot. How much smile, you look at Fox News when you get home, how much smiling you see? <laughs> Everyone's angry. Everyone wants their way. Everyone says everyone else is wrong. Well, guess what? Every one of you is wrong too. I'm wrong too. How do we get right? Following his word. They don't have his word. They have no way to get right. So they can't live, uh, verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What are good works? Whatever God calls you to do. Whatever calls you, God calls you to do, you accomplish it. It is a good work. It is something that God will bless you for. It is something that you have brought fruit to the table that you may honor our most high God and Heavenly Father. It is allowing you to be holy as he's holy because you have followed the family, uh, family rules. So, what do we do? What's the, how do we be holy as he is holy? How do we do things? How do we ensure that we understand everything that's in that book? 
How many of you understand everything that's in that book? One of these days we're going to find another basement. I haven't found them yet. We can't, we'll never understand everything in the book. He's an infinite God. I'm not infinite. None of you are. Since we're not infinite, we will study the rest of our lives. We just studied in uh, Peter about salvation, how the angels wanted to look into it. They were created with God. They've been by God's side since the very beginning. They see everything God does, and they can't figure out salvation to save their lives. If the angels, next to God, need to learn something, Trust me, I'm never going to understand everything there is of God as long as I'm here. I'm never going to understand everything of God when I get up there, but I'll understand a lot more. So, what do we need to do? Uh, one chapter back, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Study and show thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What do people usually do with the Bible? Okay, it says I can get away with this if I do this. I get away with this. I really don't have to go this far. That's not really the Bible word of truth. That's a for loopholes. We don't use the Bible look for loopholes. We write the divide the word of truth looking for what God really intends us to do. Because we want to please our Heavenly Father. We want to please the one who's given us everything. We want to please the one that we're going to be living with forevermore in heaven. Do I want to displease that God? Do I want to try to say, well, I, do, I want to get away with something? Do I want to see how dangerous I can get? Remember, who's, you're going to live with him forevermore. Every single day of every eternity, you're going to be living with that God. Maybe I would want to please him now that my eternity would be a little bit better. And we do that again by studying yourself to be a workman. Studying yourself that you can be approved for God. Be furnished under all good works. Be furnished to do whatever call he calls you to do. The apostles were all joyful. The apostles loved the fact that they were working for Jesus Christ. They were joyful. They were kind of worthy to suffer in his name. How much did you hear that in sermons today? And they all were martyred. Why? Because they recognized who they were worshiping. They recognized, I'm a joint heir of Jesus Christ. I've been accepted as a son of God. I will do everything I can to please him who has given me everything, and I can never repay the debt he's given me. And that's a true statement. He has done more for you than you could ever do for him. But he asks us to give him the sacrifice of praise. Very small compared to what he gave to us. So looking at all this, we need to realize that we need to come to our God. We need to be holy as he is holy. He is our mediator. Don't use that name in vain. Don't, don't uh, come to him and cheapen that because he is your direct connection to the Father. Remember John 14, 6. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. With that mediator, hold that name above all names, as uh, it says in Philippians to do so. Make sure that you understand how to be holy as he is holy because he gave you the word and follow it. And I don't know what, the, what song do we have here, Joe? 17, thou art worthy. That's up. Yeah, that's a true statement, is it not? <laughs> so, let us go and sing to this God. Let us go sing to Jesus Christ and realize thou art worthy. And thou art worthy to receive praise, honor, and glory. How do we do it? By his word. Learning how to be holy as he is holy. I took everything right up there today, didn't I? <laughs> You've done good. <laughs> Please do stand and join me in singing hymn number 17. Thou art worthy.
our Lord is worthy for all praise, honor, and glory. There is no other being on earth that is worthy. We need to ensure that we hold his name above all names, that we give that name the glory, respect, and honor it deserves. And we do that by studying his word. He is called the word, and he is our mediator between God and man. Let's come to him often. Let's ensure we understand him. Let's ensure we understand exactly who he is and what he is, and praise his holy name forevermore. If there's anybody here who's never accepted that, is still living in Satan's kingdom. You will not live with him forever. You will, not live, you will live in hell forever because you have rejected that great holy name. If that's the case, I beg you, come up today. Come up today and I'll show you exactly how to be saved. How that you could then hold that name in honor and glory. How you can then be uh, uh, saved from your sins by the blood of Christ shed on the cross for you. There is no greater privilege than that. There is no greater honor than to be Call a son of the, or daughter of the Most High God. But you have to come to Him to do it. You have to come to the cross and repent of your sins. Now, most of us here today are saved in this uh, mighty crowd with all the snow. For those of you others, have you been holding His name up and He honor it deserves? Do you realize that He's a mediator to us? Not only to uh, uh, show God our, our sins are paid for, but also to bring His word to us to make sure that we understand who that God is, to make sure that we know how to get to that God, and he does it through his word. If you haven't taken it seriously, if you haven't been honoring that God in that way, if you have not been doing the work it takes to ensure that you are growing in grace, taking a spiritual food in, I beg you to make a commitment today to do so. Get in your Bibles and study more. Try to do the work that he is. Ask him for a calling that you, that, that, uh, you can accomplish, and accomplish that call. If you want a great calling, do the second calling first. Show you have that faith. And then continue to eat that spiritual food. Continue to hold that name holy. Continue to make sure we never use his name in vain. And uh, as Kathy uh, gets ready to pray, uh, play one more song, go to God in prayer. Ask him to search your heart. Ask him to show you where you're falling short, that you may receive correction, and then follow uh, him in righteousness. We can you play, I'll pray you out, I'll pray sign link, and then we'll close. Thou art worthy to receive honor and praise and glory. In your grace, Lord, you sent your Son to die on the cross for me. In your grace, his blood shed covered my sins. In your grace, by my faith, in that shed blood of Christ, for the redemption of sins, you have adopted me as a Son of God. And anybody here who's done that same thing, come to you in faith, accepting the shed blood of Christ for the remission of sins, has been adopted as a child of God. And thou art worthy to receive all praise, honor, and glory from your children that you have adopted, brought into your family. Let us thank you for the mediator you have given to us. The mediator, the man Christ Jesus. The mediator who uh, forgave us of our sins, who shows those sins have been paid for, and brings your perfect words of truth to us through, your, through uh, him called the Word. Let us come to him often, Lord, bringing his name as a name above all names, praising that name, never defiling it, and ensuring that we don't use it in vain. And I pray, Lord, that we will always hold that name up. We will serve you in spirit and truth. We will do everything we can with our, our minimal efforts, empowered by you, to accomplish your will on this earth. And we look forward to the day when you return. And we can hear those great words, well done, uh, uh, servant, uh, great mighty servant, and on the joy of the Lord. And Lord, we look forward to seeing you as you are. We praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. And Lord, if there's anybody here who's not saved yet, allow the day be the day that you will convert their hearts.
and allow them to be children of the Most High God. We ask all of your precious sons in your name. Amen. Amen. And with that, you are dismissed.